So in this part, I'd like to get to where when we shoot an enemy uh, and they get the hit animation, that it actually has a bit of a knockback during the hit state in the opposite direction from where they were hit. In addition to that, I think we should spend a little bit of time cleaning some things up. I did notice one bug here. So if you look at the play hit action, uh, you'll see that because I copy and paste it from the play death action, that it's actually playing the death animation here instead of the hit animation. So if I save that and we hit play again, then now when they get hit, it should be that freeze frame of the fourth frame was what I set to the hit frame. So in addition to that, the, the intention of this project is that there will only ever be one set of names and keys, key names, for consistency reasons across the entire project. So because of that reason, I think it might be appropriate to our project if we use a global name so similar to calling something animation names, we can in the project window, project settings, create a global object here. And then in any script, we'd be able to reference it basically by the name of the object, which would be something kind of like blackboard keys, and then dot the property you're trying to access on it. So what I will do in the data folder is create a new script, and I'm going to call this global names.gd. And this can inherit, uh, we could make it node, but object would be fine as well. Let's just start with object. Um, it doesn't really need to run in the scene, so there's no need for it to be a node. So we'll create. And then we have global names.gd. So we need to create a object. And so to create a global object and put it in the globals of the project, let's right click on the data folder, create a new script. I'm going to inherit from resource because I want it to sit inside of our data folder like the other resources here. Uh, let's go to data and then for the path of it, I'll call it global names.gd create. Okay, so this is extending a resource. We don't necessarily have to give it a class name because we're going to be creating it as a singleton project wide global variable. Uh, but what we do need to do is make sure that we uh, re get references to all of our names resources. So uh, this is going to have the name uh, global names, so we don't need to specify names here. So we could say animation, and then this will be a type of animation names. So I'm just kind of making it the short form of the name of the resources so that it will be easier to be like global names dot animation and global names dot keys, for instance. So let's see, should we call it blackboard or keys? Uh, probably keys, I guess. Blackboard keys, and then at export var group group names. Okay. And let's tab these over a bit to get them to sync up with each other. And we will create this resource. So I'm going to right click on data, create a resource. And we didn't create a class name, so it's not going to show up in the list. So I'll just create a default resource here. And this would be called global names.tres. So we'll click on global names.tres and we'll assign the global name script just like that. Now we need to assign the animation names. So quick load that, the keys, blackboard keys, and the group, group names right there. So we can go to project, project settings, and in globals, let's add a, a reference to it in uh, data. And then I like list view. So let's do global names.tres and open that and add this. So let's see, uh, it fails to auto load because it's probably not a node, right? Failed to create an auto load path is not pointing to a scene or a script. Yeah, okay, so I guess I was wrong. It does need to be a node actually. So we'll create a node. I'll delete the global names.tres and then let's right click, create a new scene. So this is going to be called global names.tscn and we're going to access it with global names as the root name of the scene. And this will just be a basic node, it doesn't need any 2D transform. Okay, so we create that, we open up the scene, and we assign the script. So just like before, just like with the resource, we're going to quick load the animation names, the keys, and the group names. Okay, so if we go to project, project settings, let's add this n again. So we want global names.tscn add. It's going to be called global names. So now in our scripts, we can do global names dot animation dot keys or dot group. Okay, and that means we can go into any script which is referencing a animation names. And because we're only going to use global names for our project, we can remove the export variable. So it saves us a step whenever we create a new script. 
And then we just reference global names dot animations uh, dot the name we need. So for instance, if we go into character sprite here, well, first off, uh, this script isn't going to be needed anymore uh, because we're actually handling the death and the play death action. But if we uh, were going to keep using the script, we could get rid of animation names. And then on death, we could just do global names dot animation dot death. So you can see now we don't even need to do an export variable and to keep assigning the resource and the inspector because we have this global value. Now, there are disadvantages to this approach. For instance, if you import these scripts to a different project and that project does not have a global names uh, scene set up, then it's going to start throwing errors here because you have to have now in project settings the globals global names. Uh, but you could, of course, just recreate that as you need. So it's not that much different than needing to recreate a resource and assigning it in the inspector, to be honest. But it's something to be aware of. So we're no longer checking for animation names because we don't need to assign it in the inspector, so we can just remove that. Honestly, we can just uh, unassign the script to the character sprite because we don't need it at the moment. And let's see if anything else is using a reference to the names. So if we go to, let's see, object blackboard setter, for instance, here, we can get rid of the keys. I'll save the script and okay, now we need keys that alive. So where do we get the keys from? Global names dot keys dot is alive. And we just copy that down there. And it gives us our reference to the global object which has those properties. So once again, cleaning up the inspector. And hopefully you can see why I'm going with this just making everything a lot easier. So in the is dead condition global names dot keys, we don't need a reference to keys anymore. And the play data action, we can do uh, global names dot animation dot death. I'm actually going to change this symbol to be animations. And maybe we'll make group names, groups. Yeah. Okay, just, just implying plural with all of them. Okay, that might mean we need to go back into here and add the S. Otherwise, we'll get an error, but easily fixable if it's just a misnamed property. Let's just check all of our scripts. And we don't need the animation names there. Uh, so we can go down to is hit. We don't need blackboard keys anymore because we're just doing global names dot keys. And then on play hit, we don't need animation names or blackboard keys. So let's save that and update the lines that needed those properties. So here is going to be uh, global names dot animations dot hit. And here's going to be global names dot keys dot and one reaction probably has something too. So animations and keys. Let's get rid of those. Save and we'll see all the error lines. So global names dot animations and then global names dot keys. I'll copy paste the global names. Copy paste it down here as well. Like if you were in a bigger project and you were going to be updating a lot of different scripts at once, you could use um, something like Visual Studio Code's find and replace tool. Uh, that really goes outside of Godot to like an external editor. Um, but it's similar to if you do like control, control R on the keyboard, you can rename string finds and you can match case or whole words if you want. And then across your document, you can replace all. So in Visual Studio Code, there's the option of doing it across your whole project. So sometimes I use that and it's pretty handy. Okay, but yeah, basically instead of setting like seven scripts to having their own reference to animation names and Blackboard key names, now we just have that one global variable that has all of those. And there's only ever gonna be that one global. So definitely if we need that consistency, ensuring every script in our project uses those same um, properties, then that's a pretty solid way to do it. Generally though, I try to stay away from globals, but I think this is a pretty good use for it. Okay, uh, so let's check the player scripts and um, we'll make sure there's nothing in here that needs updating the facing component hand anchor, the shooter, the shooter does need it. Uh, so group names here, I'll give it a group names there, hit save. Okay, so now we need the global names dot groups. Okay, and that updates that script. So that's pretty much it. In our level scene, I don't think we had any scripts outside of these guys moving around, the player and these. So if we hit play, in theory, everything should work still. Uh, let's see. Uh, global names groups. Okay, so let's see. So what went wrong here is that we have an assigned groups or animations on the node. So let me go ahead and check that. Global names 
Yep. Okay. Missing the groups. So assign the group names and assign the animation names as well. So it might be worth mentioning that uh, because you have this global object, if you needed to update these values across your project, you could assign a different resource in this global, or you could go into each of these individual resources and change their values as you need across your project. Uh, but it is there if you need to edit it. So let's hit play again. And uh, I think this time it should work fine. Okay, so we got our hit animation. It's just one frame but uh, later we'll try to make it a bit cooler. Our characters can die. Death takes priority over hit, which takes priority over wander. So it is working exactly as written at the moment.